this is David Hine of Aspect Art. Today we're in the Flam Cultural Center for a show called The Bones of Color. With us today is one of the painters and organizers of the show, Jan de Bos. He's going to tell us how these Dutch and Flemish painters are related and a little about the show itself. So join us now at the Flam's Cultural Center for The Bones of Color. Eric, uh, you're one of the organizers of this show. Could you tell us a little about uh, how you organize it and what what we have here? It's an exhibition called Het Merg van de Kleur. Something about yeah, the, the, the bones uh, of, of, of painting in a way, of color. And it's an exhibition of three generations uh, of uh, Dutch and Flemish painters, which is organized by Piet Moerman and myself. But uh, the original idea came from Piet Moerman to make an exhibition about what I say about painting. So he made the choice from the uh, uh, Flemish painters and I made the choice for the, the Dutch painters. Now, as I look around, uh, I see that they're all what I would describe as painterly in their way. Uh, what else unites this group of people? Uh, partly there are people who know each other in the sense that, for instance, there are some relations between uh, pu uh, pupils and their teachers. For instance, uh, marie Suzanne Robin, who was um, once a pupil of La Taster and of uh, Sierhuis, for instance. Uh, other relations are, of course, friendships. I mean, for instance, Piet Moerman, Rick Vermeers and I, we know each other from 84. Uh, God, I know Eric Oldenhoff since the uh, beginning of the 80s. Uh, he became to know also the, uh, some of the Belgian painters. There's a, a relation between uh, Ravel and uh, Piet Moerman. So, in that sense, there are also uh, that kind of relations. Now, I notice there's a, a lot of color here and a lot of paint on these canvases. Uh, what would you describe uh, the type of art as? Now, it, 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 it's, it's about painting. I see it as, as a kind of painterly poem, this whole exhibition. But uh, if you have to put a label on it, then it's a bit maybe in the direction of, ex of the neo-expressionistic movement. Although, for instance, the works of Bart van der Vijver, they're more yeah, a kind of fu fundamental painting. But uh, I think if you can say one thing about this exhibition, uh, despite uh, the, uh, how diverse the paintings or the painters, the artists are, that uh, it shows some kind of love for painting at itself. That so in a way you can say this exhibition as a kind of subtitle, uh, you, you should uh, could call it uh, in defense of painting. Well, speaking of defensive painting, we've moved into the new millennium, and uh, how would you describe the state of painting here as we began the 21st century? Yeah, I think painting is not that. I mean, it uh, survives so many uh, other movements, as, uh, for instance, one of the, the writers in the catalog text also writes, Hans Cizo, about, uh, yeah, God, in a way, the so-called uh, revolu rev more revolutionary revolutionary arts, uh, like uh, land art and so on, but it, it was such a short period of time, and in this case we talk about, let's say, 20th century painting, in the sense that uh, everything is possible, uh, with a lot of isms who are uh, connected in one image, Yeah, and I think that uh, this, this whole movement, in a way, of, of freedom of expression, that that will continue the next century as well. I think that, that uh, there's uh, on this moment no limit to it or an end. The freedom of expression is one idea. Of course, painting in the 19th century and even in the 20th century sought to change people's minds, yeah. sought to uh, stir up political or religious feelings. What do you think painting is really doing right now for the individuals? Now, I think that in, in this case, yeah, it, it's uh, 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 an exhibition about paintings, and also I think uh, partly uh, the people I know, uh, that they see it more uh, yeah, poetical in, in, in the way that you start with uh, painting. I mean, as an organizer, I can tell you that in comparison with other exhibitions about painting, then I've got the impression that there was first a very large intellectual uh, scheme and then the artists and the paintings had to be sought out to illustrate that and in this case it's totally the other way around, that the exhibition is organized with a starting point as some paintings which we admire very much. 
Now, most of these uh, painters are, in one way or another, established painters. Would you, uh, would you agree with that? Not or? all, because there are also some very, uh, uh, yeah, God, I mean, for instance, uh, the Brabant here in the Netherlands, he's totally unknown. I mean, almost unknown. So in, in that case, we have some very uh, famous painters here, like what, uh, La Taster, uh, Ravel, for instance. But, uh, yeah, what I say, uh, there are also much uh, less known painters here. As neo-expressionists, or mm. some such uh, title that we might give them, what exactly does that mean? Yeah, I think uh, neo-expressionism is, is, is a term of the art historians, uh, or more the art critics, uh, art uh, dealers from the beginning of the 80s, uh, the, the new wild ones. Uh, uh, but on the other hand, uh, the paintings from Evert Lundqvist, uh, a Swedish painter, uh, they were called in the 50s already neo-expressionist. So it, 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 it's a phrase which doesn't mean anything, I, I, I would say. This is more timeless, I think, this whole exhibition. It's not dated in the sense that... Uh Much of painting today uh, is about a commercial aspect. Mm. Is that painter selling? Is he being uh, showed at the State League, let's mm. say, for example, mm. or one of the big museums? Is that a, a definition of painting uh, by the public? Does the public dictate still through its financial support of a certain painter what painting is? Or is it the painters painting for themselves or each other? Now I think this is an exhibition for painters themselves and for each other. And what the public thinks about it, what we will see, I mean, uh, people come here, but uh, uh, I mean, everybody has his individual career, of course, and yeah, for mostly most of the painters who hang here, they are in in their own circle. But because we talk about circles, of course, yeah, very well established, and uh, some more, some less. But uh, uh, yeah, this is a, a, a painterly exhibition in a way, not so much regarding to look at uh, uh, what the public, because I think that the public in this. Uh, uh, yeah, this beginning of the new century, uh, God, but uh, is, is more, maybe more interested yeah, in video art and things like that, you know. This, yeah, you can call it a very old-fashioned exhibition in a way, but um, yeah, it's a choice. Well, it's hard to hang a video on your wall at home. Mm -hmm. uh, and some people think that some of the art today is hard to hang on your wall. Uh, what is a painter today seeking when he's uh, in creating these things? I think that a painter is, uh, yeah, I mean, I, it's not only painting, I think that every artist is, is living a life in a way like a Robinson Crusoe way, that you have to find your own way in things you make. Uh, it's, it's kind of a lifestyle where you choose from, and then you have, of course, very different uh, styles to express yourself, whether it's literature or film or, or theater or whatever. But uh, yeah, if you talk about painting, uh, this is, although there are paintings which are very figurative in this show, that uh, I still think that it's, it's a kind of, base, in basically, it, it's, it's a kind of, uh, yeah, matter uh, paintings, uh, a kind of an exhibition about, yeah, that's also what the title is saying, uh, the bone of the color, that it's, it's going back to a kind of fundamental painting in a way. Although people are, so, some of those artists here are um, taking figurative images to express things. But in the beginning, in, in the sense, totally at the basis, I think it's concerning the paint itself and then uh, the possibilities, what you can do with it. And I think that if, yeah, this is, that's very clear in this show also, to show the, the possibilities of paint, what you can do with it. This is the painting uh, which I made for this, uh, for this exhibition, it's called Salome, uh, inspired by uh, the beautiful uh, painting from Max Schleifogt, uh, which he painted probably so in, in the first ten years of this century, painting which is uh, uh, regretfully uh, destroyed in the Second World War. But um, this is one uh, yeah, of a series of Salome paintings made also versions of uh, uh, the theme by Titian, Fabricius, uh, Foray. 
and it's a very recent one uh, from um, yeah 1999. And what's going on in there? Where yeah, what we see is, of course, the, 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 the very famous image, yeah, which is also uh, uh, described by Oscar Wilde and, of course, coming from the biblical uh, theme, uh, later beautifully uh, translated into music by Richard Strauss. But what we see here is, of course, the, the, the female um, Salome dancing with here her father Herodes. Um, Herod and the, yeah, it's the scene just before uh, the captivation of the head of uh, John the Baptist in the way the, the scene that she seduces her father to uh, let him uh, beheat uh, John the Baptist and uh, this is a very colorful painting uh, although the original from uh, Schleifog much more uh, tonal is with only uh, uh, earth colors and a little bit of red and a little bit of black, uh, blue. There's a long history of relationship between Dutch painters and Flemish painters. I mean, it's uh, how does this tie in? Do you influence one another? Now, the thing is that what I told already that uh, Piet Moerman and Rick Vermeers and I, we know each other from the beginning of the 80s, and that's in a way. Uh, that goes back to a gallery in Ghent where a, a lot of young painters at that moment exposed uh, also Philippe Boutens, Ingrid Castellijn, uh, all kind of other people and that was in that sense uh, uh, a very uh, uh, fashionable gallery at that time in the sense that, that the, there were um, examples of the new movement were shown there at that time then the, yeah, the neo-expressionistic New expressionism, what we talked about, yeah. And uh, if you see a painting now from Piet Moerman, which is now totally different than his uh, work from the beginning of the 80s, but if you t we talk about that, that, that all the work of him, that was a very figurative in style of, uh, related to people like Rainer Fetting, for instance. And uh, but uh, you see that it's all very much, um, yeah, developed. If there are some painters here at that exhibition. This exhibition, which were in the beginning of the 80s more interested in the image than in uh, paint itself, then you can see within those nearly 20 years that it developed, uh, that the image is at the end uh, from a, a less importance than the way of handling with the paint itself. So anyway, in a way, it's, it's a kind of heritage of uh, yeah, a painter like Monticelli, for instance. I mean, you can take. I mean, you, you, you can make all kind of lines. If this is work which is going back to, um, yeah, Monticelli at the end of the 19th century, also the Fin du Siècle, the same period which we talk about now. Yeah, God, that goes back to Watteau, uh, Fragonard, the the, the, the Fête Galant. Uh, you, you can make all kind of lines. Well, the Monticelli it reminds me of this, these paintings on the, on the end with so much paint and mm. all of it put on very thick and yeah, yeah. but more figurative a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, how long will this show uh, be here uh, and where will it go from now, here? It, it's in Amsterdam here in the Brakke Grond. It goes till the 13th of February and then it will uh, uh, travel to Bergen, het Kunstenaarscentrum, and uh, that will be... Uh, uh, there will be a bigger show. This is the first show in, in, in uh, a series of four. And each show will, be, will enlarge um, the number of paintings because uh, here we chose uh, for, for, from everybody one or maybe two or three paintings. In Bergen it will be a two location. Starting point uh, will be the Kunstenaarscentrum. But uh, there will be from everybody three or four paintings everywhere. Uh, I mean at the, the second location and afterwards it will go to Roermond, Stedelijk Museum that will be next year, no this year, uh, I think April to June and then it will end up in the museum for Deins en Leijstreek in Belgium, nearby Ghent and that will be an exhibition with from some painters maybe even 10 paintings there. So it will be uh, larger and larger and larger, it, uh, no, it will grow uh, traveling through the Netherlands and Belgium. Eric, thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you.